Hi and welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about the cello part to Vortex Rising by Kurt Mosier. Uh, we're specifically in this tutorial going to talk about intonation, how to play it more in tune. Also, don't forget to practice with the mute on. Uh, this is marked con sword, uh, meaning with the mute. So, you know, the mute actually can really help us with the intonation. Sometimes our ear gets focused on the overtones, okay, or it gets focused on the beautiful tone just overall that our instrument is making. And it can be hard sometimes to really focus in on the pitch, especially when you have a passage like this that's very, for lack of a better term, atmospheric, okay? Go ahead and put the mute on um, and practice with the mute on, and that can actually help your intonation. Practice with it off, okay? You want to hear the full sound, um, but it, I mean, it is supposed to be performed with the mute on. So go ahead and put the mute on. It will help your intonation. And while I'm on the subject, you know, it is a one practice technique to actually put a practice mute. I wouldn't do this all the time because you don't want to get used too used to having a practice mute on. Uh, but if you put a practice mute, because this is a performance mute, right? And if you put a practice mute on, you can really kill everything and you really hear just the pitch that is there. Um, try it. Uh, you know, leave a comment down below. If you try it, let me know if it worked or didn't work because uh, I'd be curious. Uh, and if you're in need of a mute and you're not sure which one to get, I'll put some links down in the description for a couple of different kinds. There's a couple of different styles of performance mute, uh, and that's what you want to make sure you have, not a practice mute. Okay. There are a lot of accidentals here in this piece, and the scale is not... It's kind of tonal. <laughs> what I mean by kind of tonal? Well, it moves stepwise, but then it skips this F, right, coming down from the B flat. And so how do I begin to play something uh, which is not very intuitive, right? It, it's not like a, a, a regular, okay, I hate to use the word normal, but um, just how do we get it in tune? Well, the first thing for me is I'm practicing and preparing this thing, and this is at measure 79 to uh, 99. 95, right? Measure 79 to 95. It's just to first get it in my ear to internalize these notes and this and this scale coming down. I'm using my iPad over here uh, with the with the music on it, and one of the things I have on here is my uh, keyboard. All right, there's lots of piano apps out there, but. It only has 15 keys, so that's as low as it will go. But this is what I've been doing to practice it, to really, really get it in tune. Just, just so I know what the scale as a whole, in context, okay, uh, you know, moving horizontally there from note to note. I would suggest uh, installing the Looper extension for Chrome. Um, I'll put a link in the cards and you can find out about that extension and go back if you're having trouble getting this in tune and loop this section of the video uh, I've already done it a couple of times I'll do it again loop the section of the video where I am playing the piano part just so you can do it over and over again the repetition of playing along with the piano will help you get it in tune so I'll do it one more time down to that B, maybe a little faster. I'll see how fast I can do it here. Okay, and that gets you down to the low B down here. All right, um, on the scale. And I think the scale is really the hardest part of this. Um, and then once you've, you know, played along to the piano. Of course, you could always, if you have access to a piano app like this, and you can record yourself. I won't go through that right now, uh, but you could record yourself and play along directly on your own piano, or if you have a piano that will record any kind of keyboard, just something. 
See, I overshifted there. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Where am I going to? What positions am I shifting to? All right. Um, I would... This is kind of in the fashion of playing elevators, which maybe if you were, when you were younger, you, you remember those. But what if I isolate all of the B flat A G, B flat A G, okay? So that I can also internalize it that way and try to internalize this B, because I'm, I have to start in a B flat, have to shift to a B flat, then have to shift to another B flat. So what if I go, and it would be helpful, since I'm practicing this way now, is to put, my drum pitch on a B flat. A sharp. Same thing with the E's now. So I know where that E is. Alright, so it's one other way to help get this in tune. Play along to the piano, isolate um, the notes you're shifting to. And speaking of shifting, going through this with a fine tooth comb here, alright, really, really diligently, and asking yourself, where am I shifting to? What position am I in? Am I extended? Am I not extended? Okay, so we're starting up here in, I guess, sixth at some point. We don't think about positions anymore, do we? Then I'm going to second and extended. Then I'm going to third, not extended. Now here is where we overextend or we shift because we're doing all this shifting around, but actually to get to the next E natural down here, I don't shift, right? I go from closed hand position to extended hand position, and that gets me to the E. And you have to be really careful not to overdo it, because I always want to play this E sharp. Now that is a shift, so shift, shift, don't shift, 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 right? So, whoa, I did it. And this thing is going quite fast to... It's supposed to be two bows. Intonation, more about the intonation. Um, other places where you might want to isolate notes here, and that is um, on these scale things going up. I would definitely isolate some kind of an E here. Let's put it back on the E. It's going to get you from 83 to 87, okay? Um, you know, whatever notes you need through there. At the end, I think it's C sharp from 91. A C sharp. We'll allow you to hear all those. E flat's a little hard at the end, but... Land on a C sharp there at 92. And G sharp. It's a hard shift because it, it it's not intuitive to our ears. Okay. Um, let me go back here to the piano. Um, and see if I can play some of these other parts here. It's a 
and there's the end. I'll do it again. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's do uh, the middle line here at 83. If I can go back and forth here. Do the middle line. I'm doing on the iPad here. My uh, iPad keyboard is not quite big enough here, so you just have to take these two measures here. So there's down to the amplitude 85. Use the loop tool. I'll do it again. Okay. And then I'm going to go from 85 here. Sorry, 85. Go from 85 again. Let's do the opening here. One more time. Okay. Um, again, I'll put I put it in the cards. I'll put it in the description uh, to link up to the loop tool. That's what I would do to try to get this thing uh, better in tune. All right, so use the drum pitch, use the keyboard, play along. You just have to internalize it. All right, you just have to internalize it and know how it goes. And don't wait till the last minute. Start early. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.